And welcome back, everybody, to Webcamps TV Live, here from Codemash 2011, beautiful Sandusky, Ohio. Now, I'm joined here by a special guest who was actually featured in the keynote, um, Rasesh Shah from PayPal. Welcome, Rasesh. Uh, thanks, James. Thanks for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. So how, how are you finding the snow in Ohio so far? You, you traveled all the way from Silicon Valley, right, where there isn't much snow at the moment, I take it. In, uh, well, it started snowing when I rented my car, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether it's just my luck. It, or was, <laughs> it was an omen. <laughs> there you go. Now, Rasesh, tell everybody at home what you do at PayPal. Yeah, so I'm part of a developers network group, uh, and my job is to uh, help developers and entrepreneurs uh, monetize their application. And uh, we actually sort of act as a bridge between uh, the development community uh, and our engineering team. Uh, and often we keep ourselves up to date with the industry, what's going on, uh, and what's there out in the market. Fantastic, very exciting. Now, today we launched WebMatrix, and we also had a PayPal helper in there. Were you involved in that, Bacha, perhaps? Uh, <laughs> so it's interesting. Uh, uh, this all came, uh, it started happening, uh, uh, as you remember, I mean, you, you basically introduced us to WebMatrix Beta. And uh, our goal in the developers network is to help uh, developers uh, by giving them toolkits, giving them samples, demos, and make their life as easy as possible. So uh, when we saw this uh, uh, WebMetrix uh, IDE, I mean, we thought that it's a good opportunity for us to kind of have some uh, plugins or the helpers available so that the developers don't have to uh, do any coding uh, if they want to embed uh, payment in their functionality or e-commerce application. Right. So that's how it all started. So it, it was a natural fit, really. The simplicity that you were trying to drive. Definitely. Yeah. And what WebMetrix is all about, making exactly. things simple, perfect fit. Perfect. Now, the PayPal helper we saw in the keynote um, we saw the, the simple pay mm -hmm. um, method, but that's not the only um, call to the service you can make. There's some other stuff in there. What else is lurking in the helper that people can t take advantage of? So simple pay is like, as the name suggests, right, is the simplest of all the payment where uh, the consumer pays to the merchant or a sender sends to the receiver. Uh, but there are a lot of other functionalities like uh, chain payment, parallel payment. Uh, uh, so if it's a chain payment, you sit in the developer sits in the middle and then facilitate the transaction between sender and the receiver and take its commissions and uh, so on. If it's a parallel payment, uh, you I mean think of it in applications like uh, uh, accounts payable or uh, you know disbursements where you want to in one transaction want to pay like multiple uh, receivers. I mean, so those are all, all these APIs embedded as part of this uh, uh, helper toolkit. Uh, also, we have our, I mean, uh, as you know that uh, uh, our uh, website payment standard, it has uh, button manager APIs. So this toolkit also provides a way to simply uh, create those buttons using APIs and embed that within their e-commerce applications. Uh, and also there is a, a PayPal bakery template. Uh, uh, you know, if you download that template and uh, that helps you kind of bootstrap your payment uh, development uh, uh, within no time. Mm, the things I like about templates is that it provides a great way to learn the syntax as well. Ex exactly, right? So you, all you have to do is, I mean, if you uh, download that, I mean, the code uh, is all readily available. You just change your senders and the receiver IDs and a couple of credentials and stuff like that, and then you are ready to go. It's almost too easy. Uh, <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> so and that's what we aim for. There you go, there you go. We're doing our job. So. Tell us about some of the things that you're seeing at PayPal um, in terms of trends in e-commerce. What's popular at the moment? What's emerging? What should um, listeners, or sorry, what should viewers out there on Webcams TV be watching out for? So, uh, uh, I mean, we all we opened up this platform for developers about uh, uh, two years back and looking at some of the industry trends and we thought that you know it's very i mean we should empower all these developers to uh, kind of monetize their applications so some of the uh, emerging uh, emerging trends we are seeing in 2011 are like uh, local social and commerce uh, are some of the hot uh, trends going on right now so local you mean like geolocation services? Geo uh, yeah location based uh, payments i mean so uh, so give me an example where you know so that's you can take advantage of that. So, so I mean, uh, recently there's a company called Bling Nation who uh, developed an RFI-based uh, payment reader, mm. RFID-based payment reader uh, uh, using uh, PayPal APIs and PayPal technology. So you can go to the near field and kind of pay, uh, just tap to the Bling reader, and you can do uh, uh, the payment using that. Uh, uh, 
when I say uh, uh, local, I mean, uh, there are also some of the offline devices you can empower uh, uh, using uh, PayPal backend, meaning, so let's say if you go to uh, a vending machine, right? I mean, the vending machine uh, right now has a huge problem of accepting cash because you don't usually carry that much, <laughs> <I don't, yeah. laughs> that much cash in your pocket, right? So you go near a vending machine and you want to uh, buy that uh, uh, cookie bar or whatever, right? And then you don't uh, have the cash. Now, how convenient it will be if you can just pay uh, to this uh, vending machine through uh, mobile, and then behind the scene it activates the uh, candy dispenser, and then you know. I the, see. Uh, so the the mobile device becomes the bridge to the internet. Exactly for right, the and we provide all the functionality. So we have the IPN notifications, and all those can actually access the payment switch, uh, uh, if you say. Okay, so that's local, uh -huh. and then you you touch on mobile a bit there. Well, tell us a bit more about mobile trends that you're seeing. So the mobile, uh, in terms of mobile, I mean, uh, there are two aspects to it. I mean, mobile, uh, uh, what we have seen is the virtual goods and the. Uh, 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 I mean, digital goods and virtual currency is another hot trend uh, going on, and there are a lot of mobile uh, games who kind of uh, offer this uh, functionality. Now, the one uh, interesting experience in that is that when you are playing, let's say, uh, games either on your mobile or some other devices, uh, like maybe a Wii or uh, Nint uh, you know, some of the Microsoft platforms or whatever, right? You don't want to really leave your experience and kind of uh, make a purchase. So, what you need is really an in-context uh, uh, payment solution, and PayPal does that. Uh, does offer that. We announced that recently at our uh, Innovate conference, and so the, it does not take user away from your experience. I mean, uh, uh, just a browser window pops up, and you can do a payment, and boom, you are done. And the people generally receptive to that? Do they like the new technology you're bringing out? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, if you are uh, 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 doing the, uh, you know, if you are playing a game or if you are watching a TV, and I mean, you really, uh, what you want is maybe a small window near that. So you don't want to leave that experience and go somewhere else. Right. Right. And we so actually. It's like, the, it's like the Facebook Connect experience where exactly. they'll pop yeah. up an iframe yeah. instead yeah. of having to redirect. Yeah, yeah. So and we uh, in, in social terms we have a lot of seen uh, that the social commerce is a new trend also evolving. Uh, you you would have seen like a lot of uh, commerce applications on uh, Facebook where people you know collaborate and uh, kind of there are Facebook walls where people sell things mm -hmm. and things like that, right? So our APIs also helps uh, 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 empower those kind of applications. And you recently announced. Um, some new work you were doing with Facebook at your Innovate conference, was yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah, we did that. What was uh, the news there? No, so it was the same. So we demoed uh, one of our partners' applications uh, yeah. uh, on Facebook, uh, and that was actually an in-context payment without leaving the uh, Facebook experience. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so what are the opportunities that you see in the payment space as you look at it? So uh, as I said, I mean, uh, the hottest trends are like local, social, uh, and mobile. So if you can think of this as an intersecting circles, mm -hmm. right? And if you can build uh, uh, on top of, I mean, uh, that intersection, I mean, either local mobile uh, local application or a social mobile application or a social local application, right? I mean, you can. <laughs> <laughs> or a mixture of all three. Uh, yeah, uh, or a mix of all these three, right? And uh, it can, I mean, you can make a monetization model which can be, you know, uh, very good. So those are some of the uh, areas I think uh, you will see uh, very good traction in coming recent months. Now, do you support all of those scenarios in one? <laughs> can you like, can, can you do all of that kind of stuff together easily with PayPal? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, as I said, I mean, as we discussed before, uh, uh, I missed one uh, uh, point on the pre-approval uh, functionality, what we that's have. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So the pre, with the pre-approval, what you can do is uh, uh, the buyers are not really, or the consumer is not really paying, but he is committing uh, uh, that, okay, I will pay, and then you can execute the payment later on. So is it like credit almost? Uh, it's not exactly sort of a credit, but you are saying that, okay, I mean, you can exit, so you will get a, a pre-approval key, and mm -hmm. then the, buy, uh, uh, the developer can actually execute payments against this pre-approval key. Okay, so, so up to a certain limit. You can't to a certain, like yeah, so when you take a pre- crazy on that. No, yeah, <laughs> of course not. So when you take a pre-approval, you ask uh, certain questions on, okay, how much the payment amount would be, or how many transactions within this pre-approval you can uh, qualify, or I mean, when can you execute the payment, and things like so there are a lot of different parameters which you can use and using those pre approvals uh, uh, you can build a lot of exciting uh, 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 commerce models like i mean uh, 
I mean, as, as you would know, I mean, uh, the group buying uh, recently has been, you know, I mean, probably you would have seen that in the mm -hmm. news and everywhere, right? So group, group buying is a uh, uh, emerging trend right now going on yep. in the market. And with the pre-approval, you can actually uh, uh, build a model around that, where your buyer, so you can say that, okay, unless a certain threshold is reached, right, I'm not going to actually charge my uh, 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 consumer. Oh, I see. Right? I so, so, so everybody uh, kind of opts in into this pool and then you execute the payment once the threshold is reached. So you don't uh, charge the uh, customer immediately. Fantastic. Rasesh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks for letting everybody know, you know what the trends are in the web space um, around pe mobile payments and all that kind of stuff. Um, and thanks very much for being a partner for the Web Matrix launch. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Guys, we're going to go back to Redmond now, where we're going to talk to Scott Hunter, the uh, principal program manager lead on the Web Matrix project. And he's going to talk to us about doing database management and queries in Web Matrix. Roll the tape. Hey everybody, welcome back to Webcams TV and we're here today talking about Web Matrix. And we're very delighted to be joined by Scott Hunter. Scott, would you mind introducing yourself? What do you do? I'm uh, Scott Hunter. I'm a uh, principal program manager lead at Microsoft on the ASP.NET team. And I work on building all of the web frameworks that we have, which include web pages, uh, web forms, and MVC. Excellent, Scott. So welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about Web Matrix and in particular how to write databases, modify databases, that kind of stuff. So I believe you've got a demo to show us. I sure do. Um, so I've got a uh, web matrix loaded here, and, and you might notice that I have a folder called app under data. And in app under data, I've got a file called tasks.sdf. Um, when you're building applications with web matrix, what we recommend is uh, using SQL Compact. It allows you to build an application and ship it up to a hoster without having any requirements that they have a database server or you're paying some extra fee for something. Uh, you basically can build your application locally and take it in one piece ship it up to your hoster and it will just run. Nice. So let's uh, take a look at how you use it in Web Matrix. <clears throat> so you can see I've got a, a node here for tables and I've got a table called tasks. I will come up here and I will click this and I've clicked it and selected it and you can see that my task has an ID column, a name column, and a due date column. If I want, um, while I'm in here, I can click the definition button and now I can actually edit the table. You can see as I select each column, um, it shows me the types. So the ID column is an integer. Um, it's an identity and a primary key. That means that when I add a row to the database, the ID column will automatically be generated with the next value higher than the previous values in the database. I've got a name column uh, that is text, and I've got a date column, uh, a due date column that's a date time. So now, let's go look and see how you'd actually access data from web pages. So what I've got here is I've got a website with two HTML files. So I don't have any dynamic content, or content at all. So all I'm going to do is right click on the file and rename it. There we go. As soon as I've done that, um, now I can use the power of ASP.NET to program in this file. And now let's go add some code uh, to make this a little bit more interactive. So we're going to go and access that database that we've added the data to now yes. using the razor code. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> create a variable called db and I'm going to say it equals database.open and the name of my database is tasks um, and then on my next line I'm just going to say uh, data equals db.query and we'll do select star from tasks and now I'm going to go down into, into my actual HTML file, and where I have this, this test data today, I'm going to replace that with data from the database. So I'm going to do an at sign um, in the razor syntax. As soon as I do an at, I can start writing code. So I'm going to say at for each var row in data. And then I'm going to do an opening brace. And one of the cool aspects of razor is um, while I'm in the middle of code, I can just start writing, writing HTML. So I'm going to write an li tag here uh, because my sample data had an li tag. Um, and then I want to show the data. So I'm just going to say at row dot 
name, and that will show the name column from my database. I'll flip back to the database tab just so you can see. Um, I've got two, two columns here. I've got one called name and one called due date. And so all I've got to do is reference uh, those two columns. So there's my name, and I'll put a space, and we'll say it's due by, and now I'll say um, row dot due date to short date string. And so now we can erase our test data there. I will save the file, and we can run this and see if I was successful. There you go. Perfect. So we've seen in a couple of minutes there how you've created a database, modified it, added some data all in WebMatrix, and then using the new Razor code makes it really easy to access the database from a website and then render it out in HTML. Fantastic. Scott, thanks very much for showing us how easy it is to use WebMatrix to make data-based centric web apps. Thank you.